Now, Dr. Hugh Ross is the author of this book, Why the Universe is the Way It Is, uh, a remarkable uh, t text, and I, I found it absolutely fascinating, especially having just read Hawking's latest book, uh, Grand Design. Welcome, uh, Dr. Ross. It's been a long time. You haven't changed a lot. I'm sure I have, but it was almost 20 years ago that I... I remember the interview. <laughs> you do. I mean, well, I was, I was fascinated then, and I'm even more fascinated now, having read uh, Hawking's book and then having read your book, Why the Universe is the Way It Is. You also have another book. Can I just uh, have that sure. one? This is, this is your, uh, your latest book, uh, More Than a Theory, uh, by uh, also Baker Publishers. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's hard to know where to start. Because in reading your book, a lot of it, you know, is way beyond me. Uh, I, uh, when you start, you know, talking about 10 to the 700th power, my eyes glaze over. <laughs> and the, the, the vastness of the universe, and yet I'm so fascinated. I guess the question is, let's start with the Hawking thing. Is there a grand design? He says it's M theory, a uh, theory of everything. Is there a grand design from your perspective? Well, I think he's right. There is a grand design, but he's underestimated the level of design. It's much grander than anything that he's written about. And uh, you know, his whole idea that the universe is purely physical and the physical can explain everything, we're personal, we're spiritual. How can the non-physical come from the physical? You know, so he violates the principle of cause and effect. And I was particularly disturbed that he appealed to extrasolar planets. You know, we have found 500 planets plus outside of our solar system. He actually claimed that those planets proved that our solar system planets are ordinary. They prove the exact opposite. None of these planets are anything like any of the planets in our solar system. In fact, what our research in extrasolar planets is showing is that each of our planets has been designed to make advanced life possible here on planet Earth. Now, I found this fascinating as I'm re reading your book. Uh, you know, you know, would you call yourself an astronomer? Yes. You're an yeah. astronomer. Uh, when you talked about the planets, uh, you talked about Saturn and Neptune and uh, even our moon and the remarkable positioning uh, right. and the, the, uh, the, the, the shielding they provide from uh, um, radiation. Uh, uh, it's absolutely fascinating. You, you read just that and you say, well, is this just something that's happened by chance? Or is this replicable? Would there be other planets out there that would have similar shielding and uh, similar conditions that might uh, allow for advanced life? Well, we're finding quite a few planets that are similar in size and distance from their star as the Earth. But they're all coming in very carbon rich and very water rich we're now realizing what's extraordinary about a planet is it has so little water and so little carbon and that's why advanced life is possible on our planet and not all these other planets we're finding in the solar system. But you know astronomers do concede that there's design in the universe. Uh, you know Freeman Dyson, uh, an atheistic agnostic physicist said when you look at the universe you can't avoid the conclusion that somehow it knew we were coming. It was designed in advance for human beings. Now, I, I've been fascinated, semi-fascinated over the years by people who are convinced uh, that there are extraterrestrials who are visiting planet Earth all of the time. After reading your book, it would appear that certainly uh, it seems almost impossible that there's any other situation in the universe where the conditions are such that uh, advanced life could, uh, could have de developed. Well, that's a growing consensus. In fact, when I debated Victor Stenger, the uh, atheist physicist at Caltech a number of years ago, a couple of years ago, he said, this proves there is no God. Because if God really loved humanity, he wouldn't confide us to just one small planet. Mm. He would give us a much larger habitat space. Therefore, he said, God doesn't exist. It's the opposite of what I heard from Carl Sagan when I was a student at the University of Toronto, where he said, you know, the universe is so vast, there's got to be millions, if not billions, of places where there's advanced life. Atheists have done a 180. Uh, but where I see these atheists going wrong, they look at the universe and say, yes, it's designed to make life possible here on planet Earth, advanced life possible, but they think that's the only reason why the universe exists, to provide us with a home. Consequently, they say, it's a botched up job, and therefore God couldn't have done it. What they don't recognize is God had at least 12 different reasons for making the universe the way he did. 
and particularly the physics of the universe targets the problem of sin and evil. God literally created this universe to bring about the end of all evil. And what you see in the Bible is the moment evil is gone, the universe fulfills its purpose. As God spoke it into existence, he speaks it of existence and replaces it with a brand new realm with radically different physics and radically different dimensionality because it's a realm where evil will never exist again. And so that's kind of the main theme of my book, looking at the physics of this universe and why it's so crucial to bring about the end of all sin and evil, and then looking at the physics of the new creation and what we can expect our life to be like when we join the Lord there with all the rest of the people who've received the offer of uh, redemption through Jesus Christ. You talk about dark matter. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a fairly new thing, is it not? I mean, in terms of discovery. Uh, was it around 2000 that dark matter was first discovered? Well, in the 1930s, you had Fritz Zwicky at Caltech talking about dark matter. He was referring to ordinary dark matter. Yeah. We now know there's six times as much exotic dark matter. The difference is ordinary dark matter interacts well with photons. Exotic dark matter does not. And, you know, we see our galaxy. Surrounding our galaxy is a giant halo of ordinary matter we can't see. It's dark. It doesn't emit light. But surrounding that is an even bigger halo of exotic dark matter. And the sizes of those two halos are crucial for making it possible to have a spiral galaxy with highly symmetrical spiral arms of just the right dimensions to make advanced life possible here on planet Earth. So we need all that dark stuff in order to have advanced life possible. But now we also realize that uh, almost about 72% of the universe is dark energy. Uh, dark energy is the energy embedded in the space surface of the universe. It acts like a giant anti-elastic band. So that the more that the surface of the universe expands, the more energy it gains to accelerate the expansion of the universe. And therein we find the most spectacular evidence for the supernatural, super intelligent design of the universe for the benefit of human beings. How much of the universe is dark matter? Uh, dark matter adds up to about 27%. And then the exotic? The dark energy is 72%. The dark matter is about 27%. So we're talking almost everything is dark. 99.73% uh, you know, of the universe is dark stuff. Is there any way of determining what form or shape uh, this invisible matter takes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we... we we know how much of it there is of the three different kinds. We know where the geography is. We also know that the quantity of the three different kinds of dark stuff and the geographic location of the three different kinds of dark stuff must be extraordinarily fine-tuned to make advanced life possible. So I mentioned earlier, it literally gives us the most spectacular evidence for the personality, the supernatural design of the universe. To give you an idea, uh, just the fine-tuning we see in dark energy exceeds the very best example of human engineering design achievement by a factor of 10 to the 97 times. 